we've been lied to. 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 There are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. We've been lied to. You had better wake up and understand. There is indeed a global conspiracy going on, and the way it has been carried out and concealed is to control of the global money system, and hence control of all other subsequent systems of importance down the food chain, such as governments and media. It's important to understand the control of the global money system has been achieved through control of the global central banking system and that this system is a privately run enterprise. It is a private business that runs for a profit and it is owned and operated by wealthy international banking dynasties such as the Rothschilds, the Morgans and the Rockefellers. And please clearly understand that when you control the money supply you control the government. When you control the government, you control the people. When you control the money supply and the flow of information, you control the government, you control the people, and you control everything they know and everything they believe to be true. When you do it globally, you control all. It's that simple. During World War II, every country on both sides of the conflict was financed by the very same private bankers who lent out every dollar these countries used to finance their war effort at interest. In the ensuing years, the ordinary people from both sides saw great hardships and suffering. And during the fighting, there were heavy casualties amongst all the peoples involved. World War II cost over 50 million lives. And when it was over, each country that participated was left with a huge debt to the banks. It was always the people who paid the price to increase taxes, longer hours and poorer working conditions. And quid bono. Who benefited? Well, J.D. Rockefeller stayed home, and he made profits in excess of $200 million from it. For international bankers, there is nothing more profitable than war. And so when it is taken into account that these same international bankers now control all the major media, have ties to all the major oil cartels and arms dealers, finance all the main political parties and control the currency of all Western nations, is it any wonder that the world stays in a state of conflict and war? In the months following World War II, a number of prominent members of Hitler's core Nazi infrastructure were smuggled out of Germany and into America in a documented joint operation conducted with the Vatican known as Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip saw as many as 80 Nazi war criminals that held key positions in Hitler's empire and had detailed knowledge of the Nazi war machine taken to America. These people included figures such as Klaus Barbie, along with numerous Nazi scientists who were all removed to the United States, supposedly to assist the government with spying operations against Russia and for assistance in the US rocket and space programs. Many of these men were given advisory positions on boards dealing with domestic and international security. And it is one such advisory panel that gave birth to the National Security Council. The NSC then combined with the Council on Foreign Relations and spawned its muscle, the CIA. And soon after the formation of these organizations came the creation of the United Nations. 
counted as a supposed solver of world conflict, the UN was supposedly put there to maintain the safety and security of the people and to ensure that nothing as heinous as World War II could ever happen again. And the world has seen nothing but a continuous stream of war ever since. In fact, since the formation of the NSC, the CIA and subsequently the UN in 1947, the Earth has seen 258 conflicts and in fact more wars than in its entire recorded history prior to that point. Just why is that? Now each time one of these wars has erupted, usually in an area that never saw any real conflict before, it's happened in such a way that has invited Western intervention and each time we've been told by the media that this intervention is to ensure peace. Each time they say it, to make peace we use war. Peace comes from war. War brings peace. War is peace. It's double speak. If you want peace with another nation, you don't go to war with them. You go to peace with them. You work at gaining an understanding for each other and you help each other. You don't go and kill each other's children and both borrow money from the same bank at interest in order to do it. And noticeably, none of the areas in which such military intervention has occurred ever truly become peaceful again. Each one just stays in a state of guarded tension, looked over by peacekeepers and continues to function in a state of human suffering and as another endless source of income for the international banksters. In 1947, as soon as the CIA was formed, the organisation began to spread its tentacles worldwide, finding footholds and taking root in almost all countries on earth. And from there, and working closely with its Israeli counterpart, the Mossad, the CIA has managed to undermine nations from within by using false flag operations, propaganda and terrorism. And please understand that these organizations were created on the recommendations of top-level Nazis, and they were founded and operate on Nazi principles. The CIA has since become the number one trafficker of drugs and human cargo in the world. The CIA are not the good guys. They are anything but. They are a criminal cabal disguised as an intelligence agency that is based on Nazi principles, has unlimited resources both financially and militarily, and they are answerable to no one. The CIA and Mossad function as virtually the one organization. Neither they or their agents have been responsible for virtually all terrorist bombings the world has seen in the last 60 years. Their prime mandate is to undermine world security and pave the way for the introduction of a global government controlled by a global monetary system. A global monetary system that is wholly owned and operated by private international banksters. At the end of World War II, the Reich didn't lose or surrender. Germany did. The Reich simply went underground and disappeared. The truth is that the Reich was controlled and financed by European bankers right from the start. And at the end of the war, they simply moved it to America and let it continue to function, but hidden in the shadows. And unbeknownst to the American people, or to Congress, or to the people of the world, it has continued to operate from behind the scenes. And over the last 60 years, it has infiltrated itself into all important levels of government and industry and the media and has gradually spread itself out across the entire globe. Forget the politicians. They're, they're, they're an irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the State Houses, the City Halls. They've got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media, media news, all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls.